Good morning, Dr. Burks. Good morning, young man. All right, good morning, YouTube. Good morning, YouTube. I'm Quentin Avery. And I'm Dr. Burke. And we are your dynamic duel. Yeah. Uh, coming to you for another Bible study, hoping we may say something that may, um, what are we hoping it may do? Encourage you to read, study, mm -hmm. and ask questions. And I want to encourage you to look up there, not there. Okay. We get yeah, we go we gonna get sharp at this. Okay, yeah, okay. Hey, all right. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I know it's hard though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not hard. I just, I just gotta be reminded. Okay. Let's see, that's my notebook. Okay, so the, the today's topic is preparation uh while we're on earth. Uh -huh. Um I'm trying to think of the question the young man asked me uh um yesterday. Oh, okay. He said the point of us um, living on earth and he said something and then I had to uh, stop and, 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 and correct him and I was telling him I was saying uh, that the that while we're on earth the creator is trying to um, find a way to live and dwell among his creation correct so he created us and he's trying to dwell and live among his creation Mm -hmm. And I pointed out that it, during the Garden of Eden, Eden during Adam and Eve's time, mm -hmm. there was a time where he dwelled among his creation. Correct. Uh, uh, in Ezekiel, um, is that a good scripture to go to? Uh, Ezekiel 36. Well, there was a time where, where the creation of man, even in Genesis, um, that they were made in the image. Mm -hmm. The likeness and the image of the creator right. they were perfect and blameless until wickedness was found in them right so uh while we're on earth it's a preparation time um a preparation time you know pretty much means that um god is trying to when you go when you read the bible you're going to start at genesis and you're going to get to the what they call the fall of man. Uh -huh. And then when you get to Exodus, and then when you get to Leviticus, I believe Leviticus starts where God is calling out to Moses from the tent. Mm -hmm. Then when you get to Numbers, it says God is called Moses in the tent. Mm -hmm. So one uh, scripture, he's not permitted to enter the tent, and the tent represents the presence of God. Correct. And he wasn't allowed to enter into the tent. Mm -hmm. And then in another, and then in another book in, in uh, Numbers, is going to read God called to Moses from in the tent. Mm -hmm. And then so Moses was allowed to enter into the tent. And so what happened in Leviticus was that God was showing that he's his presence is holy. Correct. And in order for mankind to enter into his presence, we have to purge the evil that's within us. We have to be holy. Yeah, in order right. to enter into right. his holy presence. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So while we're on earth, it's a preparation stage. Right. Yeah. And so what we were reading uh, before we started the video was um, in Jonathan Kahn, his uh, uh, cosmic bridal chamber. Uh -huh. He talked about earth being a bridal chamber. Right. And how on earth we should be purifying ourselves. Uh, let's check out... Um, um, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Okay. Yeah, let's check okay. out Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, talking about the bride and the bridegroom. Huh? Talking about marriage. Yeah. Okay. It is talking about marriage, but not a man and wife marriage. Huh? Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Okay, got it. All right, so Ephesians 5 and 25 uh -huh. says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church uh -huh. and gave himself, excuse me, I'm, I'm reading it, uh, I'm, I'm signing in my phone, and then I was reading it from memory. <laughs> I kind of lost my spot in the memory. <laughs> yes, okay. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of the water through the word 
and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Now, that right there is preparation. Correct. Yeah, that's preparation. He says uh, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Correct. Yeah. So while we're on earth, I mean, you can live how you want to live. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. your choice. It's your choice. Right. You can walk against the wind or with the wind. Correct. That's your choice. That's your choice. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's some there's some curses in the world and there's some blessings in the world. Mm -hmm. If you want to partake in the curses, that's your choice. Right. If you want to partake in the rewards and the blessings, that's your choice. Correct. But while you're on earth, if you can learn exactly how God wants you to live and exactly uh, uh, what Hebrews was talking about, distinguishing good from evil, uh -huh. uh, being acquainted with righteousness, uh, even using, even if you use your body as an instrument of righteousness versus an instrument of wickedness. Correct. Then you are using earth as a bridal chamber preparing yourself to meet the creator one day in the spirit realm. Amen. 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 I agree. All right. I'm going to turn to Aaron. What you, you got anything? Uh, no. I, well, yeah, I was thinking about Ephesians, the sixth chapter of Ephesians, talking about put on the whole armor of God. Okay. And in that, you know, you got the helmet of salvation, you got the breastplate of righteousness, and you have uh, the sword, which is the word, and you got the shield, which is faith. Mm -hmm. But one of the uh, uh, armor is you'll have your feet, mm -hmm. uh, uh, your feet should be. Uh, uh, the preparation of peace. Yeah. Let's see. Because you're walking, you walking in holiness. Let's see. And so mean? you you walking in holiness. You, okay. You in you in battle. You're not in a physical battle, you in a spiritual battle. So you moving towards uh, uh your goal. Okay. See? Okay. You're not you don't you, in Ephesians 6, it doesn't say there's a back piece. <laughs> so you can't retreat. Yeah. Because if you retreat, then your enemy is going to get you from behind. Mm. Yeah. But it says, let your feet be shod with the preparation of peace. Uh, see? You're walking towards peace. You're not walking towards calamity. Mm -hmm. Some people walk towards calamity, and some people walking towards peace. You have a choice. Okay. Let your feet be shod with the preparation of peace. Okay. Yeah. Now you mentioned the marriage. Um, marriage is uh, atonement, right? Right. So in the beginning, um, I know uh, a lot of people get hung up on when they read Genesis, they say, okay, God formed this man. And then he caused the deep suit to fall on the man. He pierced his side and took the rib and out. And then he formed Eve. Uh -huh. And they say, well, 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 we know that uh, <laughs> that what we can see is that women give birth to children. But the, but the Bible was saying that that uh, that a woman came from the man. That's the only time you go. Is that the only time the woman came from the man? Yeah, yeah that is the only time. Yeah. Right. And then man become man. Be Begin to come from a woman, right? And then right. Man began, then, and then yeah, then mankind, right? Began to give birth, right? Uh, but in that particular uh, scripture in Genesis, it speaks about um, how from one man the woman came, and then they became two, and then the two in marriage had to become one, right? The mystery. Right. Well, Adam and Eve always been one. Yeah. See, it says when a man leaves his mother and father mm -hmm. and cleave unto his wife, those two shall become one. 
But Adam and Eve was always one because Eve was already in Adam. Amen. Right. Yeah. So, um, so now that uh, the two or the one, and the one became two, and then and then the one had to become two. You said they was already one, right? Which is atonement, right? One, right? Yeah, right. And so, all mankind on earth have to receive atonement some kind of way with the heavenly Father. Correct. Now, there's a process for that because it has to be done through His Son. Okay, which is Christ, right? So, but I mean, I'm sort of branching off to another topic without, but I'm trying to get to the atonement because on the earth, you know, uh, a, a man was asking me about our journey on life, mm -hmm. right? So, we have this journey on life, and as we are venturing through this journey, uh, we're, 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 trying to, we're trying to get to this atonement level where the creator can dwell with his people correct so you have jeremiah 31 and 31 mm -hmm. where he says this the new covenant where i'm gonna put my laws in their mind and write it in their heart correct i'm gonna be their god and they're gonna be my people right right so this garden that adam and eve was on is the same place where god and mankind can dwell together Correct. Yeah. And that's what the journey of the bridal chamber is supposed to be about. Because um, the illustration that Jonathan Kahn painted mm -hmm. was that uh, the bride, the woman who is getting ready to marry this man, mm -hmm. she's going to go into this bridal chamber and she's going to put on makeup. And she's going to put on this dress and she's going to get her hair done and she's going to beautify herself. Correct. And then she's going to present herself to the bridegroom as a physical woman. Correct. Right. But when you get off into the spiritual mm -hmm. bride and groom, because we, if you read a little further in Ephesians 5, Mm -hmm. It talks about this is a great mystery concerning Christ and the church. See, now Christ and then we are the bride, and, and Christ is the bridegroom. Yeah, I think uh, that's that's that, that's a great point uh -huh. because on earth, which is the bridal chamber, that's information that everybody would need to know, right? That in this cosmic marriage. Right, right, okay. <laughs> right, you see what I'm saying? Right, right. Cosmic marriage. Right. You see, we, we're, we're looking at the physical marriage all the time. We have our eyes fixed on things we can see. Right, right, right. And not fixed on things that are unseen. Right. Which are eternal. Right, right. I take, for example, the uh, I was driving and I saw a uh, butterfly, and you know this. Okay. So right. a butterfly, right? right. The credulous. He, he, he was once a caterpillar. Right. He was once on the ground, crawling on the ground, right. with his mindset on things on the ground. Correct. But once he, what does he do? He goes up and climbs up in the, crawls up in a tree, uh -huh. crawls on uh, the limb, mm -hmm. and then he begins what they call a credulous. He uh -huh. begins to become a Cocoon, cocoon, and he he hangs there so long. Uh huh. He begins to change. We we call that metamorphosis, a change. Yeah. And then eventually, that caterpillar becomes a butterfly. Okay. And then all of a sudden, this butterfly. Never goes back to the ground again. No, <laughs> no, no. He don't go down and go visit with the no. man. <laughs> man is the only one that does that. He he stopped he stopped getting drunk for about a year, and yeah. then he goes right back to getting drunk again. Oh man, see.
but as far as nature, God, God has it all mapped out for us also. All we have to do is stay where we at instead of going back where we used to be. The butterfly is not going back. No, 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 no. He cannot. It's impossible. What, what did Jesus tell Nicodemus in the third chapter of John? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. God. Except the man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter in. Once you see it and enter it, why would you want to come back out? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a really good question. Why would you want to come back out? Well, let's take a look at um, Hebrews six. Okay, and then that, and then I will, I will answer that question you have. Mm -hmm. with the scripture. Hebrews 6. That's a good question. Hebrews 6 and 4. All right. Your question is, is why would you want to come back out? Huh. Now Hebrews 6 and 4 says, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened Correct. Who have tasted the heavenly gift, mm -hmm. who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance for their loss, mm -hmm. crucifying the Son of God all over again, and subjecting him to public disgrace. Right. So, I mean, in here it says it's impossible, but you say, why would you want to come out when I don't know when people come out? <laughs> Well, see, now he he's speaking to the ish, he's speaking to the Hebrews mm -hmm. that should know uh, 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 the, the the doctrine of baptism, laying on of hands. See, those are four major doctrines in, in Hebrews six, and if you start at verse one, he said, uh, uh, leaving the principles of the doctrine. Uh, the elementary things of Christ mm -hmm. and let us go on on to mm -hmm. perfection or maturity. Yeah. Okay, now he said, leaving, some people have not left the water baptism, the physical water baptism, people have not left it. Well, then they haven't formed the cocoon and started flying like the butterfly. They, they, don't, they don't see the Spiritual baptism, which is being baptized in the word, which is water. We just read in Ephesians 5, sanctify her through the washing by the water, by the word. But people are still on physical water baptism. Yeah. Well, then that means that, that, that their journey on earth, they wasting a whole lot of time. Yeah, because, because they're not doing any preparation. Now, they heard, they heard about spiritual baptism by the word mm -hmm. and they hear it and somebody come along and says oh no that don't sound right you supposed to be baptized in water in the name of jesus or in the, in the name of the father son and the holy spirit and that's when they go back mm -hmm. to dab it in carnal ordinance mm -hmm. see the bible talks about carnal ordinance remember him and um Hebrews uh, uh, 8, I think it's 8 and 9, where the earthly peace, the earthly, the earthly priest, he took on carnal ordinance because it was a carnal tabernacle, mm -hmm. carnal people. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, man, that butterfly, he, 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 he's soaring. Yes. And he's got his mind on heavenly things. Right. It's a change. Yeah, he's he not, he not crawling around. He's not looking back. back. He's not looking back. Huh. Now, in 2 Peter 2 and 20, uh -huh. 2 Peter 2 and 20, it says, if they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness if they have known it and then turn back and then turn their excuse me and then turn their backs on the second command that was passed on to them mm -hmm. of them the proverb is true 
Right. A dog returns to his mother. Right. And a soul that that is and a soul that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. Well, you say, why would you want to go that? Well, but see now, 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 now listen to what Jesus said uh, in uh, 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 Matthew's uh, uh, Luke eight and eleven about the sword that went out to sow seed. Uh -huh. We know what the seeds are. The seed, the seeds is the word. But some seeds fell on the roadside. Some seeds fell on stony ground. Some seeds fell in the bushes, and some seeds fell on good ground. Well, we know that the ground is the individual heart. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, but when Jesus commenced to explain it, the parable of the soil went out to sow seeds, mm -hmm. the seed that fell from the roadside immediately, the devil, or immediately, some man or woman came and told you, Ah, oh, no, I don't think you ought to do that. I, you know, I, I, the, the Bible was written by man. The Bible was, you know, the Bible is just a, a another book that don't make no sense. Oh, hit the weed, man, and stop thinking like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're wasting a lot of time because we have um, in in the book of James, in the book of James, um, um, I want to say it's the fourth chapter um, in the book of James in the fourth chapter verse 13 it says now listen you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city spend a year there carry on business and make money why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow what is your life you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes instead you ought to say if it is the Lord's will, mm -hmm. uh, we will live and do this or do that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes, all such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Mm -hmm. So I'll say that to say that we just don't know what will happen tomorrow. So our days should be in preparation. Like in the Ephesians 5, there's a great mystery between Christ and the church, with Christ being the head of the church, and the church not being the physical building, mm -hmm. but the body of believers. And we are supposed to be in preparation, beautifying ourselves. Butterfly is beautiful. Correct. Not so, not, not, not so, the caterpillar is not so beautiful. But the caterpillar, I mean, but the butterfly, when you see it, you go, wow. Right. A, a life cycle. The caterpillar is God's creation. Uh huh. See, we didn't, we can't make caterpillars. Yeah. God's really. creation, even uh -huh. though it don't, it don't look right. I don't know why God created skunks. <laughs> what? Right, right. right. A few and people. rats. Uh huh. And roaches. But those are God's creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they call them pests. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The circle of life. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but we are all supposed to be. Now, you mentioned we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but if you led by the Spirit, you don't have to know what's going to happen tomorrow. Just deal with it. Well, you don't have to know what's going to happen tomorrow, but you don't have to waste time not preparing yourself for the cosmic marriage, which is the mystery of the marriage between mankind and the creator right which takes place through christ by right. being in christ by by unity uh, uh jesus said i and the father are one right so if we are in christ then we have atonement with the father we all want so we have to be but we have to prepare ourselves by being holy without staying without wrinkle without blemish to be able to present According to Ephesians 5 and 25. Okay, okay. Yeah, in order to Ephesians 5 and 25, right. which is how we started the, the topic, mm -hmm. saying that, that after the fall of man, Moses uh, would begin writing what they call the Torah. Uh -huh. And then from Leviticus, it was showing you how to purge the evil from the individual. Right. And so as they were going over the different laws, by the time you got to Numbers, uh, by Moses being uh, being allowed to enter into the tabernacle or, or the temple or, or whatever, 
the, the actual word it was, right? Leviticus work mm-hmm. because it showed you how to purge the evil from among you so that God can dwell among his people. Correct. Got you. Got yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. So the bridal chamber is earth is the place where where mankind has fallen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe you call it a secondary heaven condition. Well, Second, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, you and man was already was already in a heavenly condition in the Garden of Eden, a place where God can dwell with mankind. Right. And then they were kicked out of the garden. Right. In the green chair then blocked and guarded the way to the to paradise. They were kicked out. Mm-hmm. So now the road or the journey of the preparation on earth is atonement, mm-hmm. the place where it started. All right. The place where God can dwell with his people. Okay, now look at uh, uh, John 4 and 1. Let's see what uh, uh, Yahshua, Yahshua the Messiah said in John 14 and 1. He said 4 or 14? 14 and 1. 14 and 1. Right. Okay. This, is, this is the scripture they quote at uh, funerals. Okay. All right. Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have uh, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? Mm. That's it. No, no. You you, uh, you didn't keep going now, but he said, "Let not your heart be troubled." Yeah. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Mm-hmm. In my Father's house, what is His Father's house? Yeah. 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 And another one that says. It, uh, my father's house. His father's house is you and me. Yeah. In my father's house. He going to prepare. See, when he went back to the father, mm-hmm. 10 days later, after 40 days remaining here on earth, he went to the father and the Holy Spirit came oh. and dwelled in those people on the day of Pentecost. Okay. We got to go, but I got to read this in the King James Version. Okay. Uh, uh, 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. That blew me away. In your father's house, there are many mansions. Run, run. <laughs> How are there mansions in this house? One. The room. Mm-hmm. See, but when hey, but, but a lot of people when, when Jesus said, uh, 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 when when uh, John disciples was following Jesus and they wanted to know where he was staying. Jesus said, foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. The girl told me, Jesus was homeless. I said, ah. Yeah. But he, when he said, he has nowhere to lay his head, who was his head? His father. He trying to lay his father's head in a house. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take a look at this again. <laughs> God, the, God the Father is head of Christ. Christ is the head of the man, and the man is the head of the woman. Amen. Amen. Wait, I'm pointing at and I'm Dr. Bird, and I hope you enjoyed this topic on uh, preparation on Earth. Um, and I hope you got something out of this video. We'll see you next time. Amen. I go to prepare.